Uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Here to discuss uh, some more derivatives of trigonomic functions and now look at basically an example on horizontal tangents and go over this uh, useful example that was in my calculus book. Basically, it states for what values of x does the graph of the function below have a horizontal function? I mean, a horizontal tangent. Basically, uh, if f of x equals uh, secant of x all divided by 1 plus 10 of x right here. And we want to know basically you know, which values of x is a tangent horizontal. So if you have a function like this, etc., uh, basically a horizontal tangent would just be something like this, and a derivative would be zero right here. So remember, derivatives arise over a run, so the derivative would be zero at this point where it's a horizontal tangent or just draw a horizontal line on the function right there. So basically, we have to first find the derivative of this, but uh, as you see, this is a pretty complicated one. Uh, this is it. we could actually apply the quotient rule. You see my video links uh, below on the proof for it. Basically, for a derivative, if we have something like actually, yeah, something like y equals f times uh, I mean f divided by g. Yeah, so if you have a, uh, yeah function divided by another function, then the derivative you could just do y prime equals using the quotient rule f f prime times g minus f times g prime right here, all divided by g squared right here. So we could do that for this one here. So this top one, we could call this f. And this bottom function, 1 plus 10x, we could call it g. So we could find a derivative of this using the quotient rule. So we'll just write that down. So f prime of x would equal to the derivative of secant of x. Uh, I showed in my earlier video the, the, the derivative of this one is just going to be equal to secant x times it by 10 of x right here. So that would be the derivative of uh, secant, and then we have to multiply it now by g, or 1 plus 10 of x. So 1 plus 10x, put the plus like that. And now we subtract the derivative of, well, let we, I me mean, just subtract f, which is secant of x, uh, times it by the derivative of 1 plus 10 of x. If we look at derivative of 1, is going to be 0. Derivative of 10 of x, like I showed in my earlier video, see the proof for that, it's going to be uh, secant squared x. So that's the derivative of 10 of x, and the 1 just becomes 0. And this is all divided by 1 plus 10x, and then it's all squared right here. So now we could uh, simplify this one here. We could actually, I'll just divide out the secant, uh, uh, the secant x out of there, so we can have, because it's, it's in both of these or subtractions, so we could have secant x out of there. And now we're going to have, and then we can multiply the 10 inside these two functions. So we're going to have 10 of x plus 10 squared of x, and then minus secant x, uh, is secant squared of x right here, or secant x squared. And this is all 1 plus 10 of x uh, squared right here. And now this part, we can actually simplify this a bit further by applying a trig identity. I'll, I'll show that first. We like I showed in my earlier video, uh, you're probably familiar with this, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals to 1. So it, this is the trig identity. You can see the proof of this in the video link below. If we divide both sides by cos squared, cos squared on both sides, on, on basically on, on everything, we're not changing any value because we're doing the same thing on both sides. We're going to get here now, it's going to equal to 10 squared. That's the, this is just, the sine over cos is just 10. And cos over cos is 1, and 1 over cos squared, that's just uh, 1 over, I mean not 1 over, it just equals to secant squared of x. So secant, the definition is just reciprocal of cos, or 1 over cos. Uh, so basically this, and then if we uh, rearrange it so we get something like tan squared minus secant squared. So we put this negative 1 over there, move this to the left, or subtract, so we get tan squared x minus secant squared. Uh, x equals to negative 1 right here. And then we just apply that here. So this value right here equals negative 1. So our final answer, yeah, so our final answer for the derivative is just going to equal 2f prime of x is equal to secant x times it by, yeah, if I scroll up, uh, tan of x minus 1 right here. So basically tan of x minus 1 all divided by 1 plus 10 of x uh, squared right here. So now we have to find out when basically the derivative is equal to 0. 
equals to zero. When is this? So then if we look at this, if we set this equal to zero, we'll just go, uh, let's just say, let's make it equal to zero on this side. Well, we know actually this uh, secant of x, if we look at, well, by definition, secant of x is just equal to one over cos of x. And yeah, and basically if you were to draw a cos of x, it would look something like this. So it goes at one, one at zero, et cetera. So it goes something like that. So the secant is gonna be one divided by it. So at this point, it's gonna be here. And then whenever it's zero here, you're gonna have like a one divided by a, a small number. So it's gonna go higher. So the secant of x will go something like this. And it would be something like this. So the graph would look something like this over here. And basically, as you can see, you'll never have it equal to zero here. So then basically, secant of x is not equal to zero. So we, just, we can just ignore this. So this is never zero. So the only way this function is actually zero is, is if this one right here, this 10x minus one is equal to zero. If this bottom is equal to zero, it's not defined, so we don't need to worry about that. That won't make it equal to zero. So we just look at this 10x minus one. So the only time we get it to equal to zero is when 10x minus one is equal to zero, then the derivative would be zero. And this is, if we rearrange this, is just 10x equals to one. And remember, uh, definition of tan of x is just equal to opposite over adjacent or sine over cos. So you get opposite over adjacent of if you have, yeah, basically if you have a square right here or a triangle inside here, and if you want to know the opposite over adjacent, this is opposite, this is adjacent. If the ratio is equal to basically one over one or one, so this is equal to one, this is equal to one. So we have a square and we know that this is 90 degrees or equals to pi over two. So then the angle, this tan of x is actually, uh, we just look at this part right here. So this angle is gonna be, well, half of this one here. So 90 divided by two is 45, or equals to pi over four right here. Yeah, so basically uh, the x is gonna equal two pi over four right here, whenever you have the ratio of pi over four. But the thing is, uh, si I mean, tan is uh, periodic, so you get something like, yeah, so if you were to graph tan of x, be something like this. So at pi over four, well, we know that uh, basically, like I showed my earlier video on tan, uh, you're gonna get, at this point, this is at pi over two. So pi over four is gonna be somewhere, yeah, so somewhere right here where this, uh, this x equals two, basically here, where we get a one ratio right here. But thing is periodic, so every single, in this case, uh, it's going to be a period of pi. So the difference here, if we look at here and here, this is going to be a pi difference. So it's separated by pi. So we get basically uh, uh, this tan of x equals to one at this pi over four, and also at this value right here, which is pi over four plus pi, etc. So then there's always a plus pi or a minus pi right here. So then our x is actually going to be equal to well plus or mi yeah, this is gonna be plus pi n, where n is equal to plus or minus one, two, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, et cetera, keeps going on, basically in any integer right here. Because, uh, yeah, so it's separated right here. So this is this is pi over four, plus a pi, plus a pi here, you could, this is two pi, or you could go minus uh, pi, minus a two pi right here, so you get somewhere over here. This would be another pi right here. So basically the final answer would just be at x equals two pi over four plus pi n, where n is an integer right here. You can see more on uh, types of numbers in my video link below. Basically this is just uh, any whole number. It could be negative there. Also it could be a zero as well for the zero right here. So it could be a zero as well. So if, you just don't have a zero, if you just have a zero, it would just be pi over four. And that would just be this one right here. So this is our answer. Yeah, and here I've actually graphed that function. This is uh, secant or one divided by cos all divided by one plus tan of x, just to just to see where how it is. So basically, as you can see, there's horizontal tangents whenever you get well x is this is around close to 0 0.75, 0 0.78, and pi over four. If you put in a calculator, this is actually around 0.78. So as you can see, that is around there. So then when we add another pi, pi is remember. Uh, equal to, well, pi is equal to uh, 3.14, etc. So we get around four right here. So uh, this is just a quick way to double check. You could put, plug in the calculator, so there's a four. So we always add, add or subtract. As you can see, then it would be a straight uh, line like this. So this is just a way of double checking. I, I graph this with the Google graphing calculator. Well, anyways, 
that is all for today. Hope you learned from this uh, useful example. And remember, like always, you could download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below. And hopefully, you enjoyed. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.